This video is an overview of Model Pro, how to prepare data for analysis and how to build a data model. The model app encompasses all of Pyramid's data transformation and preparation tools. In many cases, you may not need to prepare data if it's presented to you in a clean structure or if it's been developed by enterprise data architects. In these cases, you may do a direct query to this underlying data source and just need a virtual data model or semantic layer. In other cases, if you need to fix the data or blend multiple data sources together, you may want to use the data preparation tools. Separately, you can design and add a semantic layer to describe your data. This is called a data model. These are virtual and allow the software to navigate the structures correctly on the end user's behalf. In some situations, you don't need this. For example, if you're using an OLAP cube, SAP BW cube, or HANA view. Model Pro is the full data modeling app for Pro users wanting to prepare data to drive their analytical projects. The other versions of Model are more streamlined, offering a lighter experience. They include Smart Model, which is designed to deliver a one-click AI-driven data ingestion and modeling experience for files like Excel and CSV. Model Lite for a simplified wizard-like experience for mashing up data and delivering data models. And Direct Model for building virtual data models on pre-existing databases without data preparation steps. This video focuses on the Pro version. The Model Pro interface comprises four main tabs. The first is the master flow, which can be shown or hidden as needed using this button on the ribbon. The master flow provides you with tools to build advanced pipeline and flow logic, multiple data flows, multiple data models, and interactions with various other tools like APIs, command line, and messaging. Next is data flow. The data flow is the main interface for accessing the data preparation toolset or ETL. ETL is an industry term that describes the process of extracting, transforming and loading data into a target database. This includes tools for fixing data and running machine learning. After data flow comes data model. It's used to define virtual data models or semantic layers that describe the structure of the data and provide instructions to Pyramid on how to query them. So data flow builds a database while data model is used to query a database. Last is security. These settings show the role access to the materialized database, data model and machine learning models. To start the demo, we'll build a data flow to ingest some data. Pyramid can work directly on many data sources without ingesting them, but this is usually only done when the data is in its final form. If it's not, business users can use data flow to fix or prepare the data. For this example, we'll select a data source. Pyramid supports hundreds of data sources, including files, relational models, web sources like Facebook and Twitter, SAP, and more. I'm going to connect to an Excel file. You can click the link below the video to download this sample file. Add the source node to the canvas, and then define the source from the properties panel. For this exercise, we're loading the Excel file called Spreadsheet Demo. The sources tables will be displayed in the tables window. Select the tables that you want to copy and then click Add Tables, which adds each table to the data flow as a separate node. Let's mash up with a database here. I'll connect to an SQL database. To do this, we'll add the SQL server node to the canvas, then we select the required server and database and import the tables we want. At this point, we can use these tools to perform data transformation. From preparation, we can add a range of formulas to the tables in the data flow. I'll start by adding the distinct node, which removes duplicate rows from the table. 
We simply connect it to the relevant table and hit preview. Next, I'll use time intelligence to calculate and produce various date time values based on a date time column in the data source. So I'll connect this to the table where the date time column is stored. Then preview the table and we see all the selected date time groupings have been extracted from the date key and added as columns. We can use column operations to edit, manipulate and calculate columns. I'll start by adding the combined columns node, which is used to combine two or more columns into a single column. I'll use this to combine the first name and last name columns in the customers table. All I need to do is choose the columns to combine, select a separator and name the new combined column. Now I'll preview this to see the new combined column in the table. From joins, we can add join operations to combine either columns or rows from two different tables. I'll add a join to combine columns from the manufacturer and manufacturer details columns. We connect the node to both tables, choose the join type and choose which columns to join. And when we preview, we see the new join table. Next, we can add machine learning algorithms to the flow by choosing one of the algorithms here. I'll use the decision tree. I need to choose both the input and output columns to train the algorithm. For this example, I'm inputting the age, children and income columns. I'll select purchased bike as the output. This trains the algorithm to predict who will purchase a bike based on their age, number of children and income. We can save the algorithm's output as a machine learning model, which can later be added to another data flow. And we can add Python or R scripts either by writing them or by downloading them from Pyramid. The final step is to connect a target to the data flow. Pyramid can build a database into numerous different technologies as shown here, including its own inbuilt in-memory database engine. I'm going to select the in-memory database for this demo. From properties, we can create a new database or connect to an existing one. I'll create a new one and click connect all to quickly connect all the widgets. Once we've defined the data flow, we move on to data model where we build a virtual semantic model. The interface is divided into four panels. First, the configuration panel lets us set meta details about the new model. We can change the model name, description, default measure and culture. We can see the source data flow and the target destination followed by some statistics about the model. The tables panel shows us the table structures and their relationships in the model. Each table that's represented can be collapsed or expanded, hidden and resized. We can preview each table by clicking its preview icon. Pyramid uses heuristics to add joins between the tables based on the primary key col columns, but we can edit the joins as needed. To edit a join, click on it and select the join type and make any other changes from the properties panel. We can make other changes to the model like showing or hiding tables or columns, adding or editing measures, renaming columns, and a lot more. You can hide tables and columns to stop them from showing up in the data model. Pyramid automatically hides key columns and measure columns. Key columns won't show up in the data model later on, but measure columns will show up in the measures folder. To hide a column, deselect its checkbox. To show a hidden column, select its checkbox. 
Pyramid automatically detects measures and assigns them to the sum data type. I'm going to change this measures data type from sum to count. This can be done from the context menu or from the measure settings. We can also add multiple measures to a column. I'll add a second measure to this column and assign it the average type. End users will then be able to add either of these measures to the query in Discover. We can also change the measure formatting both from the context menu and from the measure settings. I'll change this measures format so that the decimal place won't be shown. Columns shows us a tabular listing of the model to make it easier to view and edit settings without the relationship diagram. Many of the functions available here are also available from tables. So things like adding or editing measures, editing formats, and creating or renaming folders. These are all things that can be done in both tables and columns, and where you choose to make these changes will mostly depend on your own personal preference. Next is hierarchy. We can construct multi-level hierarchies comprised of multiple columns. End users, when querying the model, can then navigate through the drill paths created by these hierarchies. We see here that we already have two date-time hierarchies. These were automatically generated from the time intelligence node that I added earlier on. Now I'll build a hierarchy from the products table. From the table, just drag the required columns onto the attribute selections panel. Arrange them in the required order and choose the hierarchy type and then click add to build the hierarchy. Finally, we need to set security permissions for the database and the data models that we're going to materialize. Here we'll see the data model and a list of user roles. If we created a new database or any machine learning models in the data flow, these will also appear here. For each of these materialized artifacts, we can provide read or write access for specified roles. Roles with read access will be able to access the materialized artifacts and query the model, while roles with write access will also have access to the model definition file and will be able to edit it. I'll provide read and write access to everything for the admin role and just read permissions to everything for the analyst role. And I'll add read permissions to the data model only for consumers. The last step is to process the entire model file. Click the execute button and then click master flow. Under reporting action, select the way the processing should end. Here we'll choose discover pro. Once we process the model, we can see its progress in the progress panel. If there are any errors, these will be recorded here. Once the model is successfully processed, it's opened in Discover Pro, ready for us to start querying it. And that wraps up our brief overview of Model Pro and how to prepare data for analysis and build data models. Mm -hmm.